Welcome back slide roll fans. This is going to be a two video series on computing some algebraic expressions using trigonometry. Uh, some slide rolls have specialized scales for this like the P scale. Uh, so we're going to do these calculations without specialized scales simply using uh, the regular trigonometric scales. Uh, the first video is going to focus on this form uh, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Uh, this could be useful for uh, finding the length of a vector in two dimensions or for uh, finding distance between two points uh, in two dimensions. At the end, I'll extend this to three dimensions, so we'll do this uh, in higher dimension also. Okay, for our purposes, we'll assume a is less than, uh, a is greater than b. Um, so let's see how this solution would work on the slide rule. The idea is you think of this as a trigonometry problem. If you have this triangle, um, you make a greater than b so that this side is longer than this side. Uh, this is because you're going to use the tangent scale. Uh, so you set up this triangle. If this side is A, this side is B, then the hypotenuse here is the square root of A squared plus B squared. Uh, so let's see how the solution would work. First, tangent theta should be B over A. So tangent theta over B should be 1 over A. This is the setting I'll use in the slide rule, and I'll find the angle theta. Then I'll use standard uh, law of sine setting for sine theta uh, to find square root of A squared plus B squared. Uh, this is the standard setting you would use uh, where you've got the index of your um, S-scale over the hypotenuse. Okay, uh, if you're not familiar with the standard trig settings, um, you might want to review those, uh, but you don't necessarily need to know them going into this video. So the reason I'm going to start with the larger uh, side is so that when I use the T-scale, the angle I get um, is less than 45 degrees. Okay, now what kind of slide roll do you need to do this? You need a slide roll which has S and T keyed to D. Um, so any REITs slide roll, a standard REITs slide roll would be like this if you flip the slide, um, if you reverse the slide. Um, here I'm going to use this uh, KNE log log duplex deci trig um, on the trig side. Um, but what we're basically going to need here are S, T, and D uh, to do this setting. Okay, let's look at the first example, 3.2 squared plus 4.5 squared. Again, start with the largest number. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is put the index here over the 4.5, right here. Then, I'm going to slide the cursor to the 3.2 on C. Okay, what I've done is I've set up this proportion. And so, on the T scale, uh, what I should be reading um, is the angle theta. So I'm reading that right here. That looks like 35.4 uh, degrees. Okay. To set up this proportion, I leave the B. Okay, so I leave B, uh, which is this, uh, sorry, the 3.2 here. What I do, though, is I need to move that angle under the hairline on the S scale. So that angle, again, is 35.4. I'm going to move the S scale. Here's 35. S scale here is right above D. There's 35. So 35.4 about here. And then I'm going to read the result out here on D. That's about 55 point, uh, sorry, 5.5, 5, eh, about 3. So again, using the tangent scale to resolve the angle, then you're reusing the hairline position. Um, but moving the slide to use a standard S setting where um, I've got sine theta over B is 1 over my target. Uh, so target red here. Okay, let's do another example. Here's square root 136 squared plus 45 squared. Again, start with the larger number. So I'm going to put that larger number 136 uh, here at the index on D. Then I'm going to move cursor out to 45 on D. Then I'm going to read on the T scale about angle 18.3. Uh, I want to move the slide so 18.3 is under the hairline on S. Then I should read here under the index uh, on the D scale the result. Looks like about 1, 4, uh, 3, 3. 1, 4, 3, 3. Okay, now important thing to remember when doing this is that the ratio of A to B should be less than 10. Uh, if that ratio is greater than 10, then you're going to end up falling on the ST or SRT scale. 
Uh, but you'll, what you'll realize is that on the slide rule, that scale is used for both S and T. So when you, if you were to try and transfer the, the moving the slide step, right, moving that from the S scale to the T scale is going to be a non-movement because you're using the same scale for both. So if A, uh, A to B is, uh, gr is uh, greater than 10, uh, then you might as well approximate this simply as A, uh, because this term will be so small to be fairly, uh, essentially insignificant. Um, if you really need that resolution, maybe use a slide roll with uh, R scales. You're going to have to add manually. And you can, you can get, especially if it's just a slightly, slightly over 10, you can get some significance on the slide roll, uh, but with more effort. All right. Last thing I want to do here <clears throat> is kind of a surprise. So some slide roll manuals suggest you do this uh, using the DI scale. If you read the K&E manual, uh, they'll give a solution to this with the DI scale. Um, they also give the solution that we use. Um, I prefer that solution because it can be chained. Uh, so let's see what would happen if you chain that computation. Uh, so you take square root a squared plus b squared. Okay. Uh, once you do that, the result is reading under uh, the index of the s scale somewhere on d. Ah, but that's exactly how you start. You start by putting the, the index uh, essentially over a. So you're going to use this result of your first computation um, as the first number in the second computation. So that's going to get squared. Then you're going to get, have a third number squared. And then you're going to take the square root of that uh, by chaining. Ah, but if you simplify this, you see that when you chain, you just compute a squared plus b squared plus c squared, which is exactly what we need to compute length of a three-dimensional vector or distance in three dimensions. Again, you want to attack this uh, large to small, and uh, you want to look at that ratio, both the first time a to b and the second time, that result to c, uh, to see if you're going to go uh, over 10. Uh, in general, these numbers should be close together. Okay, let's look at this example. Square root 36.4 square plus 27.4 square plus 15.6 square. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, so I'm going to start by setting 36.4. Let's see. 36.4 under the index. Let's. I know I'm going to be using these numbers on D, so let's set this right index. 36.4. Okay, then I'm going to come to the 27.4 on D, 25, 26, 27, uh, 4, about there. I see on the T scale angle, looks like 37 degrees. So let's move 37 degrees under the hairline on S, 35, 36, 37. Okay, uh, square root of 36.4 squared plus 27.4 squared is now here. But so I'm just going to chain. I'm going to come to 15.6 on D. I'm going to read angle on T scale about 18.9. I'm going to move the 18.9 under the hairline on S. And read final result here on the D scale. Looks like 48 and some change, let's say 48.2. Okay, uh, by the way, when you do these computations, uh, here you clearly get an angle which could be used as a polar representation um, of the vector. Uh, here you get two angles which could be used in some spherical representation. Now, if they're the two angles you need for the standard representations, uh, that depends on a lot of factors. Um, but those angles could be useful to you, um, but then you have to think more through the different cases. Um, Okay, hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for part two.